Alexander from Austria said that uh, I experienced a big setback because I just stopped playing for two months as I have many things to do and I could not pick up the guitar and now I feel very awkward as if I lose stuff that I was doing with Easy before. Yes, this is so true. <laughs> they said this joke that, joke that uh, the first three days you don't play only you notice it. If you stop playing one week, your friends will start noticing it. If you stop playing two weeks, then all the non-friendly people will notice it. And in one month, you're fired from the <laughs> from the conservatory or from the group, right? Well, this is true. That guitar, you know, this is very yellow. You have to carry it every day. Even if you play, suppose if you play ten minutes or five minutes a day to get some maintenance there, you will not lose uh, so dramatically, but if you stop playing totally, like imagine two months, of course, if you learn something properly, it will not take much time to get it back. But it's not a good idea because in guitar, when especially when you pass the, the intermediate or going to the towards the advanced level, whatever you are going to get, you have to put a lot of effort and then if you stop practicing that skill or that thing technica technically for instance this is very true then you lose very fast so it's difficult to go up and very easy to go down like in life <laughs> it's always very easy to pick a bad habit or, or do something detrimental for our lives and in difficult to improve things sometimes but with good association and if you have nice intent and your mind of course everything is in the mind indeed but even students who couldn't play I, I know some guys they were even to the hospital or, or something maybe I said even didn't stay there with the leg who knows but they stay there all the time like now for instance an excellent student Ricky is from LA he's here for the courses and, and, and he broke the, the ankle or something, but bad thing, I had the excuse to not come on and still he is there and very enthusiastic and I, I really appreciate how this guy really has a heart for music. So your desire and your determination have to be put into test. So therefore, don't stop playing. This is what, in my method, I always give students for, for for instance if someone say will have a busy month and then you organize certain things how this guy can practice in 10 or 15 minutes something which will be, will be productive and will keep the, his his assets or what he invested to get technically or otherwise in shape so that at least he's not going down right but if you don't do that you just don't play Yellow's woman, that white has the same shape. En el libro lo que descubrí ahí es la improvisación. La improvisación es algo que yo pienso que cada músico debería, cada músico del estilo que sea, del clásico, del flamenco, de cualquier otra música debería, debería aprender porque en la improvisación te da mucha libertad y a la vez te da mucho conocimiento de, de dónde estás tocando y cómo estás tocando. Oui. 
Pablo. Sí, Paco, ¿qué es para usted la música popular y qué es la música elitista? Yo creo que la música elitista es el refinamiento de la música popular. Por ejemplo, el flamenco. El flamenco originalmente es una música popular, la música del pueblo andalucí. Pero creo que ya no le pertenece más al pueblo, porque de pronto habemos gente que nos hemos pasado toda una vida encerrado puliendo esa expresión popular. Entonces ha llegado a un nivel en el que el, que el pueblo ya no, no, no tiene acceso, sobre todo a los matices que vamos consiguiendo la gente como yo, que nos pasamos muchas horas eh, elaborando esa música.